You're listening to Discography Discussion, episode 276, Battle Cross, hosted by Dan Terry. This is not a band that's playing a bunch of breakdowns and trying to get people. I mean, they are absolutely trying to get you stoked for the pit, but it's not it's not that kind of pit. It's, it's going to be a circle pit. And Joseph Wren, because this is information critical to your functioning at the moment, I would like to inform you I am rolling. Presented by DiscussMetal.com. And if your will to overcome is never coming back in his charger, then you are ready for this episode of Discography Discussion. I am Joe. That is Dan. Yes, welcome to another episode of Discography Discussion, the podcast where you listen to a whole band's discography in a week, and then we talk about it. This week, we've selected a band called Battle Cross. And let me tell you, man, it's been, it's, it's been at least a month since I heard a, a good band. <laughs> <laughs> After all those new metal bands, we wanted to get back to something brutal, something heavy, something groovy, something that... With guitar solos. Thank you. And Battlecross has a short discography, but it's a very satisfying discography. And I was excited to hear some serious metalcore on this show again. I enjoy New Metal May. I hope you all did too, even though it may have had some flaws along the way. But this week we're talking about Battlecross. And I'm already going to start arguing with you. This is not not Metalcore. Which definition of Metalcore are we disputing here? uh, All of it. (laughs) All of it. This, This is a band that probably came up in the Metalcore scene. Like, let's get that right. And I guess you could say that the vocals may have a little bit of a hardcore edge to them. But this band is a metal band to the bone. Battlecross brings the thrash. They bring the melodic death metal. Uh, they they mix the two together in a very very satisfying way. And uh, yeah, this was this was definitely a good palate cleanser for me uh, after listening to Flaw for an entire week. It makes me feel way more special, and it makes me feel like I'm being heard. Well, before Dan tells us all how special he feels, I'm going to take this time to say thank you to everyone for listening to the podcast. Thank you for listening and for subscribing. If you're not a subscriber, then you can find everything discography discussion at discussmetal.com. We're on Spotify, Apple and Google Podcasts, TuneIn Radio, Stitcher, Podchaser. So if you have an Amazon Echo or a Google Home, you have no excuse. Ask it to play the latest episode of the Discography Discussion podcast, and it will. We're also on Facebook and on Twitter at Discuss Metal. Be sure to like, favorite, and subscribe. It really helps us out. It lets us know you're listening. And now Dan's going to tell us all about five-star reviews and the Discord server. Yeah, I mean, I'm going to talk more about the Discord server. You guys know how reviews work, right? Go to, go to your podcasting app. If it lets you leave a review, leave us a review, preferably a five-star one. It's actually, I have a, I have a nice up- update for that. Uh, the, uh, the the gentleman who left us a one star review, uh, it, you know, was holding us hostage uh, for a uh, ACDC episode. We we did talk to him on Discord. See, it's related, and uh, we talked about the fact that we will be doing an ACDC episode sometime in the future. But you guys know I'm going to hide that you know, behind a bunch of smoke and mirrors as I usually like to do. But uh, he has since changed his review to a five star review. So thank you very much for that, sir. And, uh, you know, the Discord server is the place where we are. You know, following us on social media is appreciated and encouraged, and I like that. But every now and again, I'll get a message from somebody that will say, man, you know, I'm trying to get a hold of you on social media. Uh, And, you know, it's I'm just I don't know if you guys answer these messages. I do try to answer our social media messages as much as I can. But the quickest way to get to us is to jump on that Discord server where we are at. I hang out there all the time. Joe hangs out there all the time. All of the Patreon subscribers hang out there as well as all the fans of the show. So if you're a fan of this show and you want to hang out and have discussions about music, our Discord server is the place to be to do that. We hope to see you there very soon. But there's also something else that I want to talk about that is very near and dear to my heart. Uh, And that is our Patreon. We have a list of Patreon subscribers that I would like to shout out right now. Number one, I'm not actually going to number them, but it is interesting seeing this name come across my desk. Uh, John Drake of the uh, Nerf Herder Council podcast. Oh, come on! Long time friend of the show. Thank you so much, John, for your support. We love you, man. We'll, We'll have John on more episodes. But we also have to shout out Aaron Phillips, 
Evan Merkel, Lost Fiction, Kyle Driver, Dangerous Dave, Richard Renz, Big T, Big T, Brandon Miranda, Ken Zapla, Jeremy Prince, Josh Moser, David Brown, Samuel Woodward, Brian the Dean, Lance Allegood, the King of Metal. And Patrick Asplund. Uh, thank you guys so, so much. There, there's a few new names on there that I haven't seen before. So welcome to the fold. And uh, we definitely hope to see you on the Hangout coming up soon. Something else, too. Uh, if you live in a different time zone than we do, uh, we are based in the United States. And you're a Patreon subscriber and you would like to also participate in a Hangout with us. Uh, we will. We, we are trying to find out what that time zone is, so please let us know on Discord or email us on at show at gmail.com. Let us know like where you're at and what the time difference is between us and you, and we will try to make something work if you would so desire to uh, have a hangout. Uh, there is another uh, change announcement. I apologize, guys. Uh, Battlecross has a very short discography, so I'm taking this time uh, to to explain a few things. What's up uh, with all these are, changes, gonna, dude? I'm a little yeah. thrown off right now. Things are things are changing on discography discussion, but not in a bad way. At least not as far as I can tell. I'll be the judge of that. Well, the first you can just cut out anything that you disagree with. That's <laughs> that's, that's our dynamic. Joe Joe edits the show, so you have that. You guys may have noticed that on YouTube, once a month, we do a show. It is a topic-driven discussion called Discuss Metal Live, uh, where Joe, myself, and Mike, who is a, uh, a newcomer, uh, that we you guys will probably be hearing more from Mike uh, in the future, either on discography discussion episodes, but he's definitely slotted in as a uh, semi-permanent member of Discuss Metal Live. And uh, so Mike is, is you know, number one, one of the changes uh, that we have. I know we don't usually announce things like this, but he is a new face. And uh, so if you do tune into the Discuss Metal Live broadcast that's on YouTube once a month, uh, definitely make sure to give Mike a warm welcome to the discussions. He's added a lot uh, to some of the crazy things that we've talked about. And if you guys don't know what Discuss Metal Live is, essentially we sit down and we talk and some of the feedback that I've gotten from listeners over the years is, man, I love listening to you guys talk about metal related subjects, but because you guys are spending that time talking about a band's discography, do you guys, you know, it'd be cool to hear you guys talk about other things. And that is entirely the point of Discuss Metal Live. It's a chance for us to pick a topic and sort of discuss it. So we've done episodes talking about like the the metal soundtrack of of the doom games and uh we did a discussion about elitism and gatekeeping in heavy metal we did a discussion on uh, where we matched up our favorite video games with different genres of metal so we've had a lot of fun with that and uh the other big thing and this is mostly for the patreon subscribers uh you know normally we were having a we were having discussed metal live every month and then we were having the patreon hang out either the next day or the following week so with Discuss Metal Live, you guys know that, you know, when we're broadcasting this live, you can absolutely take part in this discussion. If you jump in the chat on YouTube, a lot of the time we do encourage your interaction and your questions. So make sure you are dropping your questions or your thoughts about what we're talking about into the chat whenever it's live. But the coolest thing about Discuss Metal Live that we're doing now, if you want to continue that discussion with us, we are going to be merging our Patreon hangout with Discuss Metal Live, meaning we're going to sit down, we're going to do our hour and a half show, our discussion that you can absolutely participate in. But you guys really want to get in on that Patreon because after we're done with the live show, then we're going to kick over to our own private party where we're going to have our monthly Patreon hangout with our Patreon subscribers. So you guys really want to get in on that if, you know, let's say we're talking about something and you want to get in and you want to give your thoughts like face to face, that will be the place to do it. So literally about 10 minutes after we're done doing the show, we will kick over and start doing our monthly Patreon hangout. So make sure you guys jump in on that. We do a lot of stuff. We do a lot of fun stuff with that. We talk about the show. We give away a lot of uh, a lot of information that we normally would not give away. Uh, you know, as far as like upcoming episodes, things that we're wanting to talk about, bands, you know, that people have recommended to us, what we think about them. All of that stuff happens in the Patreon hangouts, and we also play games. We do, we do a lot of fun stuff. So you guys do not want to miss out on this. 
if you're a big fan of the show and and you want to hang out, we love interacting with you guys, and this is our way to kind of do all of it in one exciting night every single month. So I hope to see you there. I don't know where to send everyone first. There are links in the show notes to everything Dan just said. Patreon.com forward slash Discuss Metal. We have some sweet perks. Discuss Metal Dan on YouTube. So there's one more announcement. One more thing? One more major change, and that's called Skip the Line. Unheard of. Yeah, if you guys have ever, you know, wondered why you suggest a band to us, and it takes us like a year or two to get around to actually talking about that band on the show, uh, you've heard us use the term master list before, right? We've got we've got this giant list of bands, you know. No, it's not the Metal Archives, but it might as well be. <laughs> okay, we, we have been suggested almost every band to, that, that could possibly exist. We're going to be here a while. But for you guys that are super, super passionate about wanting to hear the bands that you want talked about, talked about, we are introducing Skip the Wait. What does Skip the Wait mean? Well, it means that you are going to have an opportunity to directly influence what band we talk about one time per month. And you can get more information about that at patreon.com forward slash discuss metal. We have some sweet perks. You said that already. (laughs) It won't be the last time either. Everybody's like, okay, shut up, guys. Talk about Battlecross. If you insist. So, Dan, tell me and the listener all about Battlecross. Battlecross is an American heavy metal band. They are from Michigan, and uh, they describe themselves as a blue-collar thrash band. I'm not sure what that means, and I'm, I'm not sure that really describes what I'm hearing on these Battlecross records. But what I can tell you is I am liking what I'm hearing. Spoilers. Uh, And I do think that we need more bands like Battlecross in the the collective metal consciousness. There is such a thing as being a heavy band. And what does that mean? It means play the damn guitar, play the drums, shred the solo, scream if you have to, sing that chorus, and just be heavy and amazing. You can be one of the best and most entertaining bands anyone has ever heard, but it has to be interesting. It has to find something that the listener can latch onto without stretching their expectations so far to the left. And with heavy metal and this style of metal, I'm going to call it metalcore because it cosmetically reminds me of metalcore more than it does heavy metal. But we're blurring the lines and we're talking about semantics. This is just a heavy fucking band that has enough of your favorite tropes that you're going to be in for whatever they lay down. And I had fun this week because every time I heard something that sounded familiar, I could say, oh, there's there's that kill switch engage kind of riff. Oh, wait, they're shredding. Now it's like a Judas Priest thing. Oh, the dude is screaming at the top of his throat. I love every second of this. The only thing that doesn't happen the Bruce Dickinson chorus. So I think that whenever you're saying you're hearing metalcore riffs, you're you're hearing melodic death metal riffs. You see, metalcore sort of borrowed the riff book from melodic death metal. Absolutely. So that, that's what you're hearing. I, I don't. I do not hear metalcore. This is this is not a band that's playing a bunch of breakdowns and trying to get people. I mean, they are absolutely trying to get you stoked for the pit, but. But it's not it's not that kind of pit. It's it's gonna be a circle pit. It's so much be blast. A, I love it's it. It's not gonna be a ghost punching pit, right? So the thing that struck me as interesting about Battlecross right off right off the bat is I had actually never really heard the band prior to doing this episode. Hence why at the top of the show I was like, where we listen to a band, you know, for a week and then we talk about it. Uh, this is one that was recommended to us and honestly when I heard the name Battlecross, I had no idea what to expect. Like, because I was like, is this going to be like another power metal thing? Because for some reason, every band everybody recommends us to listen to is a power metal band. And I don't hate power metal, uh, but I'm not in the mood for it as much as it is recommended. But keep those recommendations coming. <laughs> is that passive aggressive? Sorry if that was passive aggressive. I, I really do mean that. We The show runs off of your guys' recommendations. As soon as you say the word battle cross, I get medieval vibes plate armor with the big red cross in the front you've seen it in all those king arthur movies you've played it on whatever steam game is massively multiplayer medieval killing everyone 
So I was expecting that. Now that I've heard the band, I don't actually know what they mean by the word Battlecross, which means that Battlecross is just a heavy sounding band name like we used to come up with whenever we put a band together. The name had to sound cool. It didn't have to mean anything. Well, I was surprised to find out that the band has actually been around since 2003. Which is, you know, for a band that sounds this that sounds this slick, that, that kind of makes a lot of sense. They they spent a lot of time sort of sort of perfecting their craft. You know, and it wasn't until it what really wasn't until twenty ten that they finally ended up getting a full length album released, although they did release it themselves. And I wanna get this sort of this part of the discussion kind of out of the way right now. So this band's first album is called Push Pull Destroy. Two thousand and ten. Yep, and it was uh, it was a hundred percent released by the band, independent, probably as a way to shop to labels, uh, which clearly worked out for them because you know there's there's more albums and they are out uh, on labels, so you know they, we've got that going for us. They're actually all on Metal Blade, which is probably the best label to be signed to when you're when you're this type of band, and um, you know I'll be honest with you, I really didn't listen to this one. Which you're kind of like, wow! You guys said you listened to the whole discography. Uh, you could definitely make an argument that I did and I didn't, because Push Pull Destroy was eventually retooled and re-recorded into the debut album that everybody probably knows from this band, which is Pursuit of Honor, 2011. Yeah, I looked them both up. They've got very similar track listings. Um, I apologize, I was not able to find a rip of this album on YouTube. Uh, and I wasn't also able to find one in the uh, shady corners of the internet. <laughs> so unfortunately, I did not get to listen to this one. But I feel based on some reviews that I've read that it is similar enough to the album that ended up being Pursuit of Honor to where we can safely proceed uh, into talking about that record. It wouldn't be the first time a band put out an independent release, got signed or got a budget and decided to re-record. It's a good idea if you've spent eight years that this band spent writing these songs, perfecting their performance, their technicality, and getting it right. I couldn't pull a new album out one year later and make it sound this good. If this band could, congratulations, guys. You have what it takes. Keep doing what you do. But for now, I'm listening to Pursuit of Honor. Also not helping my medieval vision of this band. Well, if you look at the cover, it's it's modern-ish. It, it really looks like a 1980s thrash cover. And how much that excites me cannot be overstated. The album starts off heavy. It fakes you out with the piano-driven intro, and then it just slays. Play fast, play heavy, double bass, and scream. You say it's not metalcore? This might be the most metalcore moment in the band's discography, but I don't care. It's a heavy record. It's so satisfying to hear a band play riffs that are technical and have that thrash influence that I look for in any band that plays amazing solos. It all comes from somewhere, and Battlecross is bringing it to you one riff at a time. And it's interesting. These are riffs you can come back to. There's definitely a lot going on here. You know, they, they start off with, you know, your melodic acoustic sort of, sort of introduction. And, um... It's weird you say piano because I don't hear the piano, but I'm not hearing too good lately. So, <laughs> you know, there there is that. Uh, but, you know, the album starts off proper on Push, Pull, Destroy. And it's amazing to me how they start off with that sort of classic metal introduction that the, the fades into a, a high-pitched shriek. But, like, it almost sounds like a little Iron Maiden-ish starting off. So, like, right off the bat... You've got sort of an establishment of credibility, I guess. If there, if there's, if that's the best way to put it, it, it they, they they go, they they showcase their their roots, but then also make it very apparent that no, but this is also a heavy band. So like, if you listen to like really, really, I'm not saying Iron Maiden's not heavy, but you guys know what I mean. <laughs> but they are they they are establishing their dominance and their technical skill all within you know the first minute of the first song and it does not let up from there what you end up with on this record is a flurry of different genres that are sort of melded together sometimes haphazardly but it it works I, like i don't have a problem with it 
Uh, they, these guys will, will shift from thrash to classic heavy metal to melodic death metal in the span of, of 35 to 40 seconds. This band is so classic. There's a bass solo in the middle of the first track. When's the last time you heard a heavy metal band stick a bass solo in before the shred? If that doesn't paint the picture of what makes this band unique in 2010, there's no better set of paints to use. The la- Anytime you are willing to give the bass a few seconds to not just play the bass on a heavy metal song, it means you know what you're doing. It means the band has the technical prowess and they understand orchestration and how to drive the emotion and the attitude of the song. That's what this first album is for me. It's attitude. It's we're heavy, we're fast. It's a very old school. I've heard Metallica say it a thousand times. We want to play heavy, fast, and be the center of attention. I think Battlecross can stand on their own and be that center of attention. They absolutely can. This band would blow me away. Like if I had never, if I had never heard of them before, and I was at a show, and this band opened up, you know, like I'm here to see Dying Fetus, right? And then Battlecross opens up, right? I'm not going to be ready for it in a, in a in a good way. And this band is very very good at blending together styles that I like in a way that is interesting to me, and in a style that is mostly natural. And on the lyrical and vocal side of it, you've got a mix of, of higher pitched sort of shrieks that you'd get from melodic death metal, and then some of your deeper guttural stuff that you get from like more brutal styles of metal. Um, they tend to just alternate through those, but man, lyrically, they, they're very like pissed off, angry. They've got, they've got sort of that, that angst that 80s thrash bands had. And uh, they carry it really, really well, despite having a little bit more of a modern sound. And uh, I'm, I'm here for it. I think this part is. I think this album is is very, very balanced with its uh, with its its combination of different styles. And a lot of the time, when they put this stuff together, it's like peanut butter and jelly. It goes together really, really, really well. Now, if you go into Battlecross thinking this is going to be like literally the most brutal band that ever existed or whatever, you're looking in the wrong genre. Uh, this is for this is for this is for those people, those those thrash fans from the '80s that you know, they hate all that modern stuff because it's not you know it's not technically as good and it's not as riff oriented and it's for kids and I don't like it. You know, you, so you're talking like your 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 40 year old to 60 year old crowd, right? Those are going to be the guys that are going to be all, yeah, all these new bands suck, but that band Battlecross, those guys are really cool. I mean, unless you're like a Metal Archives forum dweller or something, then you're, you're going <laughs> to hate. You're going to hate literally everything that comes out. So, you know, I, trust me, I feel you, but come on. I'm definitely an old school thrash fan. I'm not going to tell you all those other bands are garbage, but what I will tell you is... Battlecross is what you're looking for if you just sat through all those new metal bands and needed something faster. And this is the best mix of the genres we enjoy. It's the right balance of heavy metal. Yeah, it's got the influences we talked about. Yes, it has all those influences. You could call it metalcore, but that's not what it is. It's heavy metal. It's fast. And I think it's time for the War of Will 2013. The War of Will, it's 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 a record that, you know, might actually pull you out of being a guy that only enjoys music that was released in a certain decade and might actually pull you forward as a fan to the point where you're like, okay, cool, yeah, I'm I'm actually uh, I am actually maybe gonna check out some some of these newer, more modern bands, but you're probably not gonna like any of them as much as you like Battlecross. Uh, and this is where it's gonna sound like we're being negative, but we're not. Uh, this record is cosmetically almost the exact same as the last one uh with a little bit more emphasis on like dueling guitar lead so that's either and this is where it gets kind of blurry as far as influence goes because it's either an influence from traditional heavy metal a la iron maiden or it's melodic death metal a la you know uh at the gates dark tranquility in flames uh, a lot of those bands, In Flames especially, early In Flames was very much all about that dueling guitar lead. And uh, these guys have it in spades, but then they have no problem coming out of that and going right into an 80s shred solo, right? So, like, 
you, you, you would never know what you're going to get from this band. You're either going to get like this beautiful, melodically composed guitar solo, or you're going to get a, a cat strangler. It just really depends on how they're feeling that second. I like how these songs have more constructed choruses, even though the vocalist never goes there. You can hear the heavy metal Iron Maiden Judas Priest love that goes into some of these songs. The band is still shredding, thrashing forward. The drummer is still double bass onslaught through everyone. But then the band stops for a second and puts those two guitars together the right way. Harmonized guitar leads, a rhythm guitarist and a lead guitarist playing together, working together to create something interesting. It became a dying art or a dying choice in heavy music. And I feel like I'm listening to classic, faster heavy metal when I'm listening to this. That's the vibe I get. There's just so much that metalcore took from this style of heavy metal that I can't not hear the technical metalcore in it. And that's why this band is fun to talk about because I keep changing my words. I keep pointing at something that I enjoy that has nostalgia associated with it, but it also has modern sensibilities. The band might be one of the better examples we have of modern heavy metal, pulling from everything and putting it together versus taking one thing that we like and trying to be the heaviest band of all time. I mean, there's nothing, there's nothing wrong with bands to do that, you know, hide to <laughs> uh, Yeah. You know, like it, it's fine. Like I, I, and it's funny that you, it's funny that you mentioned that because a lot of the times I don't really like bands that blend styles like this. It's probably the metal elitist in me uh, that, that it kind of tends to strike back on that. You know, when it, when an album's genre tags are melodic death metal, thrash metal, I'm like, that's like taking an apple and mixing it with an orange, man. Like, why would you do that? They're both good on their own, but they can't be good together. Throws and up your taste buds too. Well, then I tried then I tried Terry's chocolate orange. You remember the you remember Terry's chocolate orange? I remember Terry's chocolate orange. You whack it on the yeah. table and then it breaks into eight pieces, kind of, sort of, maybe. Yeah, it's and it actually, foil. yeah, it actually ends. You end up actually liking what they did there. And uh, that's definitely how I felt about Battlecross on this album. Is uh, yeah, I think it's it's more composed. New drummer on this one, um, who was actually used to be in the Black Dahlia Murder, which is probably a band that I would compare this the most to. Not that they sound the same as uh, as we discussed in the Black Dahlia Murder episode. Uh, you know that band definitely really loves Scandinavian you know metal. And uh, it's 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 no it's no secret. Another band that's heavily debated as to whether they're metalcore or not. I think they're not. But um, now go back to the episode and find a point where I said that they were metalcore, and then you know throw it back in my face. But uh, <laughs> to, a, a, as of the day of recording this, I don't feel like the Black Dahlia Murder is, is metalcore, and I don't think that I don't think the Battlecross is here uh, either. I think they keep it brutal, and uh, the gallop is really alive on this record. You know, a lot of bands don't pull the metal gallop out enough, and uh, it's it's always refreshing to hear a band that can be this heavy, but also has no problem playing the the traditional uh, metal gallop. So uh, yeah, I mean, I really like this one. I, I don't have a whole lot to say about it other than yeah, it was another good Battlecross album. Can I also mention that these records are nice and short? They they, they all three clock in at like a solid like thirty to thirty five minutes which I think is completely perfect because there's no fluff, there's no filler, you know, and I wish I, I wish I had more words to say about a band that's seemingly doing everything right. I'd like to point out you just compared chocolate to an apple, and considering some of your recent life choices, I think somebody wants something sweet right now. <laughs> well, I had a glass of chocolate milk last night. That was pretty good. I needed to, I needed to get 100 more calories, you know, because I have to, I still have to eat a certain amount of them. So I wasted on my chocolate milk, and I don't regret it. Um, milk and chocolate, a good mix, a good, good, good mixture that works really, really well. One of these days, chocolate milk will rise to power. 2015, rise to power. So could this band go more Black Dahlia Murder? They could, and they do a bit. Sure. Different drummer on this one, too. 
Oh, guys, is it that hard to drum for Battlecross? If you are going to onslaught this much double bass and not be the drummer of Opeth, you're going to have to take a break every now and then. This band doesn't let up, but everything else feels a little slower on this one. Like they backed off on the heavy and embraced the groove. I feel like this band has their finger on the equalizer of all things heavy metal, and they're just adjusting for how they feel today. And this one, they decided they wanted to play a little bit groovier. Maybe they were listening. Maybe they were watching some Evil Dead and thought, you know what we need? We need to be more groovy. And I think this band pulls it off very well. They don't make any mistakes. This album feels a little bit backed off compared to the other two, but it's still Battlecross. They're still being more epic than their appearance would lead to the listener. It's interesting because there, I, I, I do see what you mean about them sort of it being a little backed off. But then at the same time, when they do decide to go for the throat brutality, it's heavier than it's ever been. And so it's, it's almost like the lines are a little bit more clearly drawn on this one than they have been on the previous two records. But that's the only thing I can really say <laughs> that separates this album from, from the previous two. Because right now what this band has created is like a solid 110 minutes of music, you know, plus the plus the independent album, which I could not find. Um, but it is interesting uh, that this band, you know, you could, you could literally put all three of these records on a playlist and you're probably going to have trouble picking out which record you're on, but you're going to be having a good time. That's not a bad thing. If what you need is an hour and a half of some solid metal, I know Jeff hates the shuffle, but... I embrace it sometimes. How you doing? This is the perfect, let's get in the mood to destroy everything band. Whatever that is, if that's your work, if that's real life, if you're signed into Elden Ring and you're just going to destroy the Elden Beast by yourself, this might be the band to get you through that fight. Yeah, I mean, the band's cool. I don't know about I don't know about soloing the final boss in Elden Ring. I mean, I guess if I was a true Souls player, I would, but you know how it is. Sometimes you need help, guys. It's okay to ask for help. I think that this band, and obviously this record came out in like 2015, so it has been a solid seven years since we've heard anything else from Battlecross. But I feel like when that 2022 or 2023 album ends up dropping, it's definitely going to be like this <laughs> is the only thing that I can really say. And that's not a bad thing. Uh, sometimes it's easier to talk longer about like, it's easier to talk longer about records that aren't good. These records are all good. Like I, I highly, I highly recommend all three of them. If you're if you're into thrash metal, if you're into melodic death metal, if you're if you're into classic heavy metal, I think you're gonna find something to like in all three of these. And uh, Battlecross might be your new favorite band. The only criticism I have of Battlecross, really, and this is this is a minor nitpick because. Ultimately, all that really matters is when you're listening to something and, and you like it, right? That's that's all that actually should should be a factor. Uh, I will say I do have a lot of trouble telling these albums apart, and I have a lot of trouble telling the songs apart. Not because they all sound the same, but just because the band is throwing so much at you constantly. So on one side of the fence, I appreciate that these guys are not sellouts and they haven't like gone for a more mainstream sound, even though I feel like they could take this and mainstream it up a little bit and become the biggest band ever. Um, I think that them not doing that is an intentional choice. That the 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 creative decisions that are in this record, or that are in these records, are all 100% the creative decisions of the band, and they have a very specific vision for how they want to sound, how they want to look, and how they're how they're perceived. I think they they have a good sort of grasp on all of that. So, yeah, it does sound a little samey after a while, but if you really pay attention and you really appreciate the, the riffs and the different influences blended together, I think you will not have any problems finding a place in your CD collection or vinyl collection for Battlecross. Is that your final thought, Dan? I think so. Yeah, I, th I think it is. I know we got to the finish line kind of fast, but, you know, when a band plays fast, you got to go fast. I think Battlecross is the band for the heavy metal fan. No matter what those two words mean to you, no matter where you got on the train with metal, Battlecross has what you love about this music. 
and they will challenge the diehard fan to embrace some of those aspects of other genres. I think this band will make everyone a better heavy metal fan if you listen to this band. They push the tempo as hard as anyone. They back off when they need to. They're melodic. There's dueling guitars. There's brutal, throat-shredding vocals. Everything about this band is metal. So listen to Battlecross. If you're a fan of this show, because you're a fan of heavy music, there's no reason not to. You're going to love this band. Dan, what's your album of the week? My album of the week is some brutal, brutal metalcore from 2020. The album is called Shrine of Consciousness. And the band is called Serration. It's also an EP. It's 19 minutes long, but it's got nine songs. Don't add me. (laughs) One of my favorite parts of our Discord server, Discord discussmetal.com it'll get you in we have cake we get recommendations we talk about albums that we're listening to and this week i could not stop listening to profound morality by harriet it was described to me as damn that's heavy and after listening to it i have to say though i had forgotten what it felt like the first time i heard danza 2 the electric boogaloo i've been reminded what that feeling is because this record is so heavy so brutal so loud so over the top i really enjoyed it and you will too take us out dft thank you guys so much for listening to this episode of discography discussion i'm excited i know you guys are excited about some of the changes coming up and some of the new announcements so stay tuned we've got it all for you For everything Discography Discussion, make sure to go to DiscussMetal.com. Follow us on Facebook at Facebook.com slash Discography Discussion. You can find us on Twitter and Instagram at Discuss Metal. You can always send us that sweet, sweet email at DanAndJoeShow at gmail.com. And we look forward to talking to you guys next week. And on that note, this has been episode 276 of Discography Discussion. Thank you for listening. You can like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter at Discuss Metal. Subscribe to our podcast everywhere you listen to podcasts, including Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and Podchaser. Visit DiscussMetal.com for all things discography discussion. And please send questions and comments to Dan and Joe Show at gmail.com. If you are not a patron, you can become one at Patreon.com forward slash Discuss Metal. We have some sweet perks. Hey, can I borrow $5? One dollar a month will get you into that exclusive album review feed. Not everything seems clear, the future's not so bright. The only chance is not to waste your life. Have hope and have no fear, the truth walks by your side.